You're watching 1700 and I am joined here with TK Maidza. Thank you so much. Hello, thank you Your for having me. Your set was amazing. Thank, thank you. you. Now, what got you into rap and hip-hop? Um, I don't know. Like, I found out about Nicki Minaj in, like, year 10 or something. That's when she was, like, when she was coming up, basically. Yeah, yeah. And my friends and I thought it was cool to make covers and put them on YouTube <laughs> and stuff. And my parents encouraged me to start writing originals. And yeah. then when Azealia Banks and stuff came around, I was like, this is... Well, not cooler, but it's so much different, yep. you know, and that's when I actually started writing my own stuff and, like, looking for different ways. Okay. Yeah. And was that the time you basically may have decided to be a musician or did you always want to be a musician um, when you were growing up? I think this year I decided to be a musician just because yep. I wasn't at school at all, really. Because okay. I wasn't, yeah, I just couldn't be there because yep. I was always travelling. But, um, yeah, I haven't really... It just kind of happened. Everything yep. just happened by chance, really. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, quite a good chance. <laughs> Now, generally rap music, hip hop, generally has a pretty strong message. Do you have a yeah. particular message you like to send or is it more varied um, throughout different songs? It's, I don't know, it's just me always, I'm just always complaining about stuff. It's okay. just more, also, it's like, it's my diary really. But um, it's always like, oh, you know, people annoying or, you know, I'll find a way. So that's my, probably my message, I'll find a way. Like, yeah. and then people can somehow, you know, relate to that or, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, talk to me, um, are you a big party girl? Not really. Not really? No. Not at all? So no. not the, the, the uh, image I, that you pursue pers pers <laughs> over there is uh, a bit different yeah, to the well, behind the scenes TK. Well, that's basically me all the time. Like, I'm always crazy and jumping around yeah. and being silly, but I don't really have to be drunk and, you know, go out yeah. every night to do that. Like, it's just me as, you know, 24-7 anyway. Somewhat a refreshing outlook yeah. just there. Yeah. Um, do you feel the pressure of being a young artist? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, definitely. you always want to get stuff done really early because uh, it's cool to be that prodigy kind of, yeah, yeah. like, upcoming thing when you're young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Now, I understand you spent some time in New York. Tell us yes. about that. It was amazing. It was my first time going there, and we played CMJ, and just, I like, had meetings and stuff, so it was kind of like, um, yeah, like, like, off and just seeing what it was like yeah. you know it was great it was amazing seeing how, what yeah. can happen with the career from here on in yeah and just thing. seeing yeah. how um people relate to it as so the same as how australia relates to it yeah. okay i was particularly wanting to ask you uh what fulfills you artistically what fulfills me yeah what, what do you get artistically out of all the music or anything in general um it's just a getaway it's like a you know when you just want to i don't know like yeah, Writing like it's music a and sharing it with other yeah, people. Yeah, it's that. like, a, it's like, I don't know what the word is. It's like therapy. Yeah, like yeah. Relief from just life. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I feel so much better. Like, and who have been some of your biggest influences in uh, your musical path at the moment? Um, I don't know, like M.I.A., Sandy Gold, you know, D Danny Brown, Childish Gambino, Azealia Banks was like, yeah. and Nicki Minaj, they were the reason why I started really. Okay. And you know, everyone that's doing something is always my inspiration anyway, so yeah. Okay, well just lastly, what's next for TK Maidza? <laughs> um, more shows, more writing shows. music, we're playing uh, that Triple J B mm -hmm. drum thing, yeah. beat of the drum, yes, <laughs> playing that, and then yeah, just like hopefully festivals next year and my own tour again for another single and album later on sometime. so plenty yeah. of things to come stay yeah, tuned for that thank you so much no for problem. joining us thank you for it's having been TK me Maids and we're watching 1700 thank you so much I'm very excited to be here with George Ezra welcome to Australia and the Yay, show thank you <laughs> yeah, this will be yeah. my first gig in Australia. But you have been here before. And yeah, to I've got um, family over here, so I've visited oh, okay. them a few times. And I understand you tried to hustle yourself a ticket to Splendour in the Grass <laughs> one time. Tell uh, us about that. <laughs> I got offered a ticket, but, uh -oh. but I, I had to work on this burger van uh -huh. while I was over here. So I said, like, yeah, I'll do that. And then unfortunately, they couldn't get me a ticket. So I ended up not staying for the festival, which is a shame. But So you spent your festival in a burger van. Yeah. Was it all right though? Yeah, they were like posh burgers. Posh burger, okay. Yeah. It's a bit of gourmet stuff going yeah. on. So it must feel good to VIP at Falls. So you've yeah, properly, step up, yeah, exactly, we can say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and one thing that's like really celebrated about you and is your big voice, it's incredible. You've got this awesome folk blues sound yeah. going on. 
But I take it that's not always how you've sung. I read that your first performance has something to do with Teenage Dirtbag. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I was in this little band. It was fun, like, growing up, you just played in bands and it was just messing about. It was fun. And yeah, my first time on stage, I sang the female part in Teenage Dirtbag, which was kind of, I think that's what I was on stage to do. I played a bit of bass and did that, and that was it. Part. Bit yeah. of bit of makeup, bit of yeah. cross-dressing going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I loved Very it. Nice. 13. I look great. Very nice. Uh, and you've been doing some amazing stuff recently. I mean, you've played at Glastonbury. You've had, got your debut album out, which is super exciting. You've been touring all your way through Europe. But there's one thing in particular that I really want to ask you about. I'm so jealous, like mind blown, working with Sir Ian McCallum yeah. on your clip for Listen yeah, to the yeah. Man. How, tell me about that. How was I, it? It was just like, what happens with music videos is I come up with a small idea and you give it to directors and they like make that a good idea, you know, like. So I just said, I don't want to be singing the song. And I got a phone call saying, how would you feel about so Ian McKellen singing the song and I was like yeah but you've got to ask him and they were like we already have he said yeah so and you were like how would I feel to have Sir Ian McKellen I was just I mean it's been a weird year anyway so that's kind of just the cherry on top it was like what what was he like lovely yeah yeah Nice. Very nice. And man. speaking of working with some amazing people, you've also um, performed your single Budapest with the BBC Orchestra. Yes. Yeah, how was that experience? Ah. Uh, kind of like I watched it, yeah. I just watched it back and I was like, that happened? That's crazy. You know, you've got this 60 odd piece orchestra playing a little song you wrote. It's mad. Amazing, you know. Did you have any hand in the arrangement or did they just oh, do I didn't it their do own it. way? I didn't do it. No, I kind of had my say, and then a few different versions came back, and I, I said, you know, a bit of this, a bit of that. Yeah. Is it distracting at all to be performing and to have like 20 violins playing behind you? No, it's lovely. Yeah? Yeah, lovely. It's awesome. So do you feel like you're pretty much done now? I mean, you've worked with Serene McKellen, you've played with the BBC Orchestra. Well, I can like, retire. How can you top this? <laughs> like, what are you going to no. do now? Well, I guess write another album at some point. Yeah. yeah not, not anytime soon, though. And you've got some touring coming up, the US with yep. Sam Smith, and then you're headlining yourself. I've got next Sam year. Smith and Hosier and yep. a headline of my own. So what are you most excited about for 2015? Just like getting lost in America, all the weird little yep. towns, meeting a load of interesting people. Yeah, nice. And one more thing I wanted to ask you about. Uh, you said once about one of your concerts in Bristol, which is your hometown, yeah? But I moved there when I was about 18. Yeah, so we're, okay. And um, you were saying that there was a song where a lot of couples were macking out in the background, very romantic, and that you thought that was quite nice. Do you have a song in particular where you notice that happening a lot? Do you have one romantic? No, piece? it's just more, I think like, every now and then there's a gig where it's just couples. <laughs> and it's only nice from a distance. Like if I was near them, I'd be <laughs> yeah. like, what are you doing? That's fair. Um, but yeah, it's kind of sweet, I guess. Hoping to see a bit of romance from up on the stage at Falls. I don't know about festival romance. That's always a bit smelly, isn't it? Like, I'd do without that. Yeah, so what can we expect from your set coming up? Are you pumped? Um, I am. I mean, we haven't played Despite a gig. landing two yeah. days ago. We haven't played a gig in about two weeks, which doesn't sound long, but when we had a week off, yeah. and it's the first time all year we've actually had a week off, so it's going to be like learning the tunes again. It's gonna, we'll see what happens. All right, cool. I'll definitely look forward to seeing it. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming no, in. Thank you for having me. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you. You're watching 1700. Oh,